If you're looking for the best comedy on video, then look no further. Mike Reed's first live and uncensored video is devastatingly funny and totally unstoppable. Two fellas walk along the bank of a canal. On the side of this canal, there's a big crocodile lying there with its mouth open like that. And out of this crocodile's mouth was a big black head sticking. Oh, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> One fella said to the other, look at that flesh bastard. <laughs> Only got a Lacoste sleeping bag. <laughs> Well, I walked into a fish and chip shop. He said, was this fish cooked, mate? He said, yeah, why? He said, it's eaten all the fucking chips. <laughs> Fella walking through the jungle. We ain't got a stitch of clothes on, naked as the day he was born. And all of a sudden, round the corner, come this elephant. And it looked this naked fella up and down and said to him, how the fuck do you feed yourself with that? <laughs> Mike Reed, live and uncensored, 60 minutes of classic Mike Reed. Also appearing live and uncensored on video is Frank Carson. Before I start, can I just say I'm appalled at the violence in this area. I was stopping here last night, and the house next door to me was broken in two by fucking thugs. And they rammed a vacuum cleaner up a man's ass. <laughs> and I rang up the hospital this morning to see how he was doing, and the nurse said he was picking up. <laughs> and Mr. Mugabe from Zimbabwe has gone into hospital with piles and had to roll him in flour to find out where his ass was. <laughs> well, I got a job in the morgue. I met up with a foreman. He said, there's a girl on a slab down there. There's a prawn hanging out of her fanny. <laughs> she said, you're joking. And then he said, that's not a prawn. That's her clitoris. She said, it tastes like a prawn. Frank Carson, live and uncensored. It's the way he tells them, but you've never heard him tell them like this before. And George Best and Rodney Marsh are back to take center stage in their hilarious roadshow. You've spoken about Tommy Doherty. Um, good manager, George, what are your thoughts? Uh, crap. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> but the real reason I didn't get on with him because he didn't fuck off with my wife. <laughs> Not many people know this, and I haven't talked about it over the years, and I haven't done a biography like yours, so people don't know this. But um, Alf Ramsey picked the team against West Germany at Wembley. And he was doing his team talk, and he said, um, this will be the free kicks, this will be the corner kicks. He went, Penalties. He said, um, who fancies penalties tonight? Rodney, how about you? I said, I'd love to help, I'm not fucking playing. <laughs> if given the opportunity to become managers of a club, um, would you want to do that or not? And if so, for either reason, why? Uh, good question. You go yeah. first. I'll go first. Uh, yeah, I would. I'd, I'd love the chance, yeah. String fellows. <laughs> Best and Marsh, on stage and uncut. Great comedy that scores every time. Good afternoon. And here is the weather forecast for tonight. 
We have a deep depression all over the UK, but rushing in from the Atlantic, we have a ridge of higher pressure. Now, when that mixes with all this crap over the UK, the thunder clouds will gather, the humidity will rise, and we all know what's going to occur then, don't we? It's going to fucking piss down. So why don't you relax, grab a six-pack of beer, and sit back and watch Mike Reed live and uncensored, number two. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mike Reed. <laughs> Lovely. Listen. Listen, listen. I got up early and I fancied something to eat. I found a little restaurant around the corner. I said, I'm engaging in a place behind the counter. I said, evening, is it can I help us? I said, yes. Give us a brandy. He said, certainly. I said, how much is that? He said, a penny. I said, a penny. He said, yeah. I said, don't do a nice thick juicy T-bone steak with French fried potatoes, French fried onions, and an egg sunny side up, do you? He said, certainly, sir, but that comes to money. I said, how much? He said, fourpence. I said, fourpence. He said, yeah. I said, who owns this place? He said, the geezer named Will Wright. I said, where's he then? He said, upstairs with my old woman. <laughs> Don't start that laugh, crying out loud. I said, what's he doing upstairs with your old woman? He said, same as I'm doing down here with his business. <laughs> Two fellas in a lunatic asylum. One said to his mate, is that clock right? He said, yeah. He said, what's it doing in here then? <laughs> He's walked into a barber's. He said, could you make me look like Barry Manilow? He said, certainly sit down and hit him on the nose with an airbrush. Speak. <laughs> <laughs> Jewish fella up the ladder, cleaning his window. Two bob fell out of his pocket. He ran down the ladder. The two bob hit him on the head. <laughs> <laughs> geezer walking through a Saudi Arabian market. It was a geezer having his hand stitched on. He said, I'll see you won your appeal. <laughs> Hey. Nice to be here again. Uh, and a bunch of wankers in Arabs anyway. Aren't they? As a matter of fact, Saddam Hussein just had his library bombed by the Yanks. Burnt both his books. Sick as a parrot, he's only just finished colouring one of them too. What I want to know is if Saddam Hussein had married little Miss Muffet, would the Kurds have had their way? <laughs> Listen, another bleeding firm, them Italians in the last war. What a bunch of wankers they were, weren't they? <laughs> Do you know why Italians wear moustaches? So they can look like their mothers. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you an idea about Italians. Picture the scene, the Vatican Square, 365,000 Italians. Out comes a Pope out of his pigeonhole. Anyone who want to play, dominoes? <laughs> All the Italians shout back, we all want to play dominoes, don't we? He said, brother Italians, today I've received a message from the President of the United States of America. In this message, he wants the next man on the moon to be an Italian for the glory of Rome and the glory of Italy. Hooray! Hooray! What I intend to do, brother Italians, is to pluck a feather from the dove of peace, throw it over the balcony. Whosoever the feather touches will be the next man on the moon. Ray, ray, ray. Pope got a dove, plucked over right of his arse. Dove went piss off. <laughs> English dove. <laughs> Dropped it over the balcony and began to pray. <laughs> When he finished praying, the Pope looks over the balcony and there's 365,000 Italians going, get away from me, you bastard. <laughs> God, piss off. Bunch of wankers. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, right when I was in a bloody army conscription, Jesus Christ, what a waste of a life that was. Tens of thousands of young men, 18 years old, taken away from their mother's apron strings. Took me away, man. Sent me to Kenya to fight male male terrorism. What do I know about it at 18? Never forget the medical as long as I live. 16 of us in one room. Out comes a sergeant, typical sergeant, flat hat, moustache, stick under his arm, plenty of trap. Everybody strip off in the middle of bleeding January. <laughs> it was freezing. I wound up with half inch and a dozen wrinkles. 
We was playing that game hopscotch to keep warm. <laughs> no, no, leapfrog. <laughs> yeah, they threw me out of the game, said I wasn't jumping high enough. <laughs> Kenya, man, Kenya, it's another bleeding worlds apart. And I never forget standing in front of the medical officer, I ain't got a stitch of clothes on. He looked me up and down, he went, you know, I've made small boy, haven't you? <laughs> so we've only got a fight, haven't we? <laughs> so, will you turn it? What? And this Bill Clinton's on about woofters in the arm. We had a bunch of the gays in our bloody army, bunches of them. Sergeant said to one one day, he said, do you think you could kill a man? Oh, is it eventually? Yes. <laughs> and one was telling his mate about his first jump out of the plane. He said, I was standing there, he said, and the door opened and the green light went, and I went, go, go, go. And I thought, oh, no. <laughs> oh, sod, that's a bloody long way down. No, thank you. All of a sudden, this voice behind me went, get out the plane, man. So I looked around, this massive black fella standing. I went, no, sod you, I'm not going, no. It's bloody long. No, sod you, no. But this black fella undone his flies and his thing fell out. <laughs> he said, if you don't jump, man, I'm going to shove this right up your tuckers. His friend said, did you jump? Oh, he said, a little bit, he said. <laughs> Only a bit of army worth going, and now he's got a bit of the SAS, because he went to join the SAS. Went up a sergeant behind the desk, he said, <laughs> I want to join the SAS. <laughs> he said, yes, well, you look a reasonably fit young man. He said, take this Semtex, blow and blow something up, will you? He said, you want it? Two minutes later, whoom, he come back, he said, blow something up. <laughs> he said, good, he said, right, we can take the intelligence as a test. No, he said, we start off with something very, very simple. He said, um, how many letters in the alphabet? He went, 24. He said, no, 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 I think again. He went, 24. He said, no, 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 I think you'll find it's 26. No, he said, 24. I've just blown up B and Q. <laughs> it's true. You know it's true. Many a famous word have been said in battle, mate. In the middle of battles, at the end of the battles, beginning of battles, at the end of battles, Custer's last stand. He's laying there, 10,000 Indians round him. Two arrows up his bugle, four in his chest, one up his say lodge. And his dying words were, I can't understand these bastards. They were all fucking singing and dancing last night. Trafalgar, Hardy and Nelson are walking up and down the deck and Hardy said, my lord, he said, I've been meaning to ask you on many occasions, he said, every time you go into battle, you always wear your red tunic. Why is that? He said, I tell you, Hardy, the reason I wear the red tunic is in case I get injured in the height of battle, the blood seeping through the coat, being the same colour as the coat, the men won't notice I'm injured. Hardy said, what a fucking good idea, sir. <laughs> I think I'll put my brown trousers on. <laughs> Hey, hey. Let's see what sort of audience you are. I think an audience will have try it. Two sign out, hanging up a neon sign for a well known piping firm you may have heard of called Ackles and Pollock. And the one up the ladder said the one down below, Tommy, send up a letter P, will ya? Uh, he said, We ain't got a P, Dave, we've only got a letter B. He said, Fuck you know. We've messed up that London Brick Company sign, haven't we? <laughs> Prince Charles went to open a plastics factory in Middlesbrough. And he's got out of the bleeding Rolls Royce and the filaments of this, this way, your highness. Prince Charles had a fox hat on, with a full mask, a bloody towel hanging out the back and everything. He said, sir, I really must ask you, he said, why are you wearing a fox hat? <laughs> he said, it was actually it was mother's idea. He said, what do you mean, sir? He said, I was getting ready to come here today. And mother said, darling, what are your duties today? I said, well, actually, mother, I'm opening a plastics factory in Middlesbrough. She said, Middlesbrough? Where the fox hat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I went to the barber today, he said, you're going bald, Mr. Reed. I said, well, fucking hurry up then. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I see a few people here, I don't. Like a lot of people, I sat down on Christmas morning listening to the Queen's speech, and I was expecting her to open up with, fuck me, what a year I've had. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, it was an anus horribleish year. It all started for about 14 months ago, January before last, when the Queen had the Japanese Emperor over here, Hiro Fingo. Remember him, slant eyed little bastard? <laughs> now, they're going down the mail in the horse and cart, right? The Queen's sitting here, Prince Philip's sitting here, Hero Thing is sitting there. As they're going down the mail, one of these horses lifted its tail and went. <laughs> the Queen went. <coughs> <coughs> Jesus Christ. <coughs> Turn it in, will you? Hero <coughs> Thing went, hustle, hustle. The Queen said, I know what it fucking is, she said. Prince Philip said, I'm sorry, my dear. I said, that's all right, Philip. <laughs> I thought it was the horse. <laughs> now, mate, mine, I know I haven't seen him for years. Poor old fella's got a stutter. I said, how are you, Tom? He said, fine, mate. I said, are you still caught in that bird? Do you remember the one whose mother couldn't stand you? No, it's not on anymore. I said, what happened there? He said, I went round the other night to I went round the other night to I went round the other night to take her out and she was upstairs getting ready. And I was trying to make some I was trying to make some I was trying to make some conversation with her mother. I said, look at the cur, look at the cur, look at the cur, look at the cur. Look at the cat. The cat was scratching its back right in the middle of its shoulder blades. I said, I bet you will. I bet you I bet you wish you could do that, but by the time I got it out, it was licking its off. Oh, <laughs> 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 it's nice to be back home, as I say. I was in Scotland last week. Got any jocks in? Make yourself at home, smash the fucking place up. <laughs> No, I'll go up to Glasgow twice a year to visit me hub caps, you know. <laughs> Fucking place. I've flown up there, got a car up in the airport, got on the gorbel, stuck me hand out of turn right, and some bastards nicked me watch. <laughs> Pulled outside this hotel, a little jock boy come up to me, said, look after your car, mister. No, I said, oh, son, I've got a rock viler in the back, she looks after it. Oh, I said, it puts up fucking fires, does it? <laughs> Walked in his hotel, what a dive. Even the arms of the chairs had tattoos on. <laughs> Piano in the corner of the bandage round its leg. I made myself look a right ship of brains. I'm not the geezer behind the counter. I went, oi, don't like your rules here, mate. Be in bed before I am. He said, it's be in bed before 1 a.m. <laughs> oh, <my goodness. laughs> I'm going downstairs, outside the manager's office. There's a sign, wanted chef. This fellow walked in. He said, Mr. Ramos, chef. He said, hey, what can you do? This chef got a loaf of bread. On the left hand side, he got a big bowl of butter. On the right hand side, a huge bowl of salad. Up goes the bread in the air. On the way up, the chef slices it. Wee! On the way down, he butters it. Whoa! At the same time, he slings a salad bowl in the air. Ten seconds flat, a pile of salad sandwiches like that. He said, Monsieur, that is good. Is it good? He said, I've never seen nothing like that in my life, my old son. Anything else? This chef got three bowls. On the right hand side, he got a dozen eggs. I will repeat that. A dozen eggs. He throws these eggs in the air and starts to juggle with them. In midair, he cracks them. Have some of it. The yolk went in one bowl, the white went in another bowl, the shells in the middle bowl. He put the white and the yellow together in a single bowl, spun the bowl on his chin, put a fork in so it was mixing up at the same time. At the end of the room is a large dartboard. Out come a meat cleaver. Have some of that. Double top. He said, Monsieur, that is good. He said, that's unbelievable, my old mate. He said, do I get the job? Or is it no power? He said, you fuck about too much. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, listen to me. Listen to me. I've done the show. I've got to fly back. And I know a lot of people say they like flying. It frightens the fucking life out of me. Oh, 
I've got the cabbie to drop me off outside the airport. I've got about an hour and a half to spare, right? I'm walking up and down, my bum's going boo, innit? <laughs> I said, this little cafe had a sign outside, food at popular prices. I thought we're going in. I walked in, I said, do us a favour, old son, give us a cheese roll, meat pie, and a cup of tea with you. She said, certainly. I said, how much is that? She said, £8.70. <laughs> I said, £8.70. You got a sign outside, food at popular prices. He said, well, I fucking like them. <laughs> Wait a minute. Listen. While I'm standing, another geezer coming. He walks on the fellow behind the counter. He said, can I have a breakfast? He said, of course you can. He said, you do it my way. He said, what's your way? He said, I'm a fried egg, but it's got to be hard. So hard that I can take it off the plate and actually bounce it up and down, bounce it up and down on the table. I want a bit of fried bread. It mustn't be crispy. It must not be crispy. It's got to be soaked in fat. So I want to put it on the plate. All the fat seeps out of the place. I want beans. They've got to be cold at the top, red hot in the middle, but burnt, burnt and black underneath. So I want to turn it all black. I want the bacon so well done that when you put the fork in it, it springs all over the room. He said, oh, I haven't got time to do that. He said, you fucking found time yesterday. <laughs> Unbelievable. I called the geezer. I said, here, Pat, here, come here, here. I said, there's a worm in my meat pie. He said, that's fat. I said, it's entitled to be. It's eating all the fucking meat. <laughs> I'm sitting there, this bird come in, she came out of me, she went, hello. I went, hello. I said, you fancy a bun cup of all? I said, I've only got two Bob girls. That's all right, I've got change. <laughs> like... I said, whereabouts when I've got a room upstairs? We've gone up, we've both peeled off. She went, I'm kinky. I said, so am I. <laughs> I've got her legs five past eleven over the shoulders. <laughs> Wee. Wee. Just squeeze me boobs, squeeze me boobs. I'll squeeze the little bastard. <laughs> uh, bite the nips, bite the nips. <laughs> Get the cheeks in my ass, pull them apart and slap them. <laughs> so it's come out, so I'm not surprised. I forgot what I was fucking doing. <laughs> She said, hurt me, hurt me, give me six inches, give me 12 inches, make me bleed. I thought, I'm in fucking trouble here. <laughs> I've only got four inches and that's in the warm weather. <laughs> but I went about done, I gave her that three times and punched her on the fucking nose. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got to fly back, right? Got to the bloody airport, and I mean, airports, Jesus Christ, for those amongst you don't like, the first word you see, terminal. Oh. <laughs> I'm standing there getting my ticket processed, Irish fella come in, push me at one side, he said to the girl behind the counter, could you tell me how long it takes to get to Heathrow to New York? She went, just a minute, he said, thanks very much, and fucked off. <laughs> And for those amongst you who've flown out of Glasgow Airport, you know what I'm talking about. There's no bleeding staircases and elevators and all that game. You walk straight out of the tarmac, and there it was looking at me. Dan Dare Airways. <laughs> oh. I know the company's been sold, but the planes are still the same, aren't they? <laughs> they were refueling my one with logs. <laughs> I got on the plane and put my suit belt on, they took the steps away from the plane and it fucking fell on its side. <laughs> I said to the stewardess, how long does it take to get a Glasgow to Weefrow, darling? She said, four hours, 20 minutes. I said, four hours, 20. Should we do a bit of crop spraying on the way down? <laughs> I'm sitting there, all of a sudden, there's tapping coming up there. I've looked, and there's a four-ringer. Captain's at dark glass. I said, excuse me, are you the captain? He went, yes. I said, but you're blind. And he went, yes. I went, <laughs> He said, no, come on, sir. No need to worry. He said, all our instruments today are in 
They're all in brow, I've got no problems with it. So I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I said, uh, how, how, do you, how do you taxi the plane out on the runway? He says, it's all done by my co-pilot. So he taxi it out, leave the plane on the runway, and I take over. I said, <laughs> I said what happens? <laughs> what happens then? He said, I get the clearance from the control tower, sir. I push the throttle forward and away we go. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> I said, how do you know when to take off? He said, well, as you know, sir, blind people have got extra sensitive hearing. And as soon as I hear all the passengers go, fuck it out! I pulled the stick back. And we eventually landed at Heathrow, quite near the airport. <coughs> Something always amazes me about flying. Why the fuck do they put frosty glass in the toilets? <laughs> Who's going to look in at 35,000 feet? <laughs> Whether I do long or short or an aeroplane, it always gives me a day. But I'm a nervous passenger. I don't say that for any other reason, and it's perfectly true. I've got off the plane, so I'm straight away for airport. Found the first camera, as I say. Got on this camera, said, What up, the geezer behind the camera? I said, Do us a favour, Sonny. Went, You're Mike Reed, didn't you? I went, Yes, you might. I'll be I'm not being big time, my old mate. I said, I've got a split in that egg. And then Ashburn and Anna, they're no good at me. Could you make us something up? He said, Yeah, of course. He said, Mike, we only had Frank Sinatra in here yesterday. I said, You didn't, did you? He said, No, you prick. You just asked me to make us something up. <laughs> He's playing golf, walks his ball in the woods, walks up in the bloody woods, takes a four and out of his bag, he's scrubbing through the woods, trying to find his ball, all of a sudden knocks the teapot over. Out this teapot come a genie. He said, I'm the genie of the teapot. The geezer went, fucking turn it in, for Christ's sake. He said, I'm the genie of the teapot. He said, you've got three wishy bottles. Got, before we go any further, I've got to tell you, whatever you wish for, your wife gets three times the amount. What's your first wish? He said, I want to be the greatest golfer in the world. He said, no, you're not the greatest golfer in the world, you're the second greatest golfer because your wife's three times better than you. Oh, he said, yeah, I forgot about that. He said, what's your second wish? He said, I want 10 million pounds in the bank. He said, as we speak, there's 10 million pounds in your account, but don't forget your wife gets three times the amount as you. There's 30 million hers. He thought, yeah, of course there is. He said, get your last wish. Don't forget your wife gets three times the amount as you. What's your last wish? He said, you couldn't organise a mild heart attack, could you? <laughs> Listen, listen. Two geese were talking. One said to his mate, he said, Tell me, he said, how do you like your women? He said, You like them a uh, young, middle aged or getting on a bit? He said, Well, give a chance. He said, I like a middle aged. I mean, I don't know what they're saying. I don't know what they do. You give me a yay or a nay. It's on the face. He said, When they're undressed, he said, How do you like the boobs? He said, You like them fairly firm with the old nips and things up in the air. <laughs> with the little blue veins that run out of the side. Or do you prefer them like slate layers nail bags? <laughs> he, said, he said, what about when they're lying down? He said, the belly. He said, do you like the belly like, you know, fairly firm or when you're with it? <laughs> no, he said, I, I, like, I, like, I, like it, I like it fairly firm. He said, what, what, what about the cheeks of the say you know? He says, you like it nice and firm like two little boys fighting under a blanket? <laughs> or an aerial photograph of the Alps? <laughs> I like it. He said, what, what about the curly clock springs? <laughs> he says, you like them all nicely, neatly and trimmed, you know? Or, or like a decaying haystack, you know? <laughs> This way, boy, and I show you where the entrance is down here. No, it's all like, it's, what about the Jack and Danny itself? Is it? Is it, yeah? Do you like it like a, like a little mouse in here, or is it? Or... Or like a ripped out fireplace? He's, no, he's not. <laughs> no, he said, I like it like a little mouse in here, or... He said, I thought was much. He said, why are you fucking about with my old woman? <laughs> Uh, three weeks ago, me and my wife got invited to a fancy dress party. As it happens on the week, I was a bit busy. I never got time to go to a fancy dress outfitters. But upstairs in our attic, we've got one of those cow outfits and we use a pantomime. We go dress as a cow. Do we get drunk or what? So much so, Mr. Last Bus Home got to walk across the field. 
in this cow's outfit. I'm the front half, she's the back half. Halfway across the field, we've heard it. There's a bleeding great ball coming at us. My woman went. I said, well, I'm going to eat some grass. You better brace yourself. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have a go out to mum, really. Been with the same lady a long time now. I don't suppose I'm liable to change. I look around the business. All my mates getting married and new young wives. Des O'Connor. I mean, how old's Des now? 140 bleeding eight. <laughs> Something about with young girls. Bruce Forsyth. If I've got a young girl in the bed now, I don't think I know what I believe to do with it. <laughs> You're like playing snooker with a bit of rope. <laughs> Never get my home missing, we got married 17 years old. And like all young women, sell her as a rope. Went to this lonely and honeymoon hotel, she came out of the shower, got the negligee wrapped around her. And I just bought one of those new Polaroid cameras that's just come out of the market. I said, uh, can I? Take a photo in the new, babe. Do you want anything like? I went, take the name, Jane. Oh, thank you. Lane, 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 Lane. On the bed. Get, get your legs. <laughs> get the legs at quarter past nine. Anyway. <laughs> I went, <clears throat> what well, up? Should we go and do without it, darling? I'm going to keep that in my breast pocket next to my heart for the rest of my life. I'm going to have a bath now. She went, before you get in the bath, she's going to take a photograph for you in the nude. I went, F luck, how are you? <laughs> Jim Bollock, so we can do with that. <laughs> Should have the fucking thing enlarged. <laughs> the only problem with marriage to many is ridiculous. I'm one myself in laws. My mother in law is an 18 carats, 100% rat bag. 32 stone the woman weighs, no matter where you're sitting in the room, she's sitting next to you. Woo. And she wears in big elastic knickers. We were going through the woods the other day, the elastic in a knicker broke. Brought down four trees. <laughs> Shung her knickers on the line to dry and a family of gypsies moved in. <laughs> with an horse. Huge woman. First time my father and I went to give her one, he climbed on top and said, can I switch the light out, love? She said, yes, why? He said, the bulb's burning my fucking arse. <laughs> She said to me last week, son, when I die, will you pour a bottle of whiskey over my grave? I said, yeah, if I can pass it through my kidneys first. <laughs> Way. You may think I'm being showless with my mother-in-law. No, I'm not. I'm going to compare with one of my mates anyway. His mother-in-law got drowned. Drowned, man, at sea. The Coast Guard had dragged her out. She got six lobsters hanging on her. The Coast Guard said to my mate, what are we going to do? He went, well, you have three lobsters, he said. <laughs> I'll have the other three and uh, I can set her again. <laughs> My father in law is just as bad. What a silly old sod that is. He's the thick as two planks. He's a long distance lorry driver on the Isle of Wight. <laughs> he went fly fishing and come back with a nine pound blue bottle. I went round his house the other day, I said, Jesus Christ, Ed, your ceilings are high. He said, yeah, your mother wanted two rooms knocked into one. <laughs> I bought my lavatory brush for Christmas. I said, I got my lavatory brush, Dad. Oh, he said, fuck that boy, I've gone back to paper. <laughs> I mean it, I mean it. He went to the motor show and spent four and a half hours walking round the fucking car park. <laughs> I mean it. He went for a job on a building site to form and said, can you make tea? He said, of course I can make tea. He said, can you drive a forklift truck? He said, how big's a fucking teapot? <laughs> He said, you get the forklift truck, you go over there, you pick up them telegraph poles, you take them down out to the end of the road and you start putting them in. Murphy's going to start at that end of the road. At the end of the day, he said to my father-in-law, how many telegraph poles you put in? He said, three. He said, three? Murphy's putting 21. He said, yes, but look how far he's left them sticking out the fucking ground. <laughs> anyway, the people like that. Unbelievable. 
Years ago, he went to work in a circus. He went down to the circus and said to the spring master, I want to be a lion tamer. He said, hang on, mate, it's an really applicant for the job. It's a girl. She goes first. My father and I said, I don't mind waiting. As he said that, the ring master opened up the case, pulled his rope, pushed his bird in. Out has leapt this lion about 300 yards along it. We're not fucking big It seen this girl. It's bound, as it bound, the bird went straight with the blouse, straight with the skirt. The lion stopped dead. Lowered itself to the ground and began to crawl slowly, but very slowly, to walk this girl. As it was creeping, it lifted up this paw, which was about nine and a half foot across. About to give the girl some of that. She'd done no more. Struck with the bra, struck with the panties. The lion stopped dead. Lowered itself so close to the ground, it was making five tracks. <laughs> and all of a sudden, with a tongue like a roller lino, it began to lick her all over. All over the feet. All round the chad all over the Bristols, through the curly clock springs. <laughs> Ringmaster said to my father, oh, can you do that? He went, easy. <laughs> Get that fucking lion out. <laughs> After about six months, he went up to the elephant train. He said, oi, Winkle, your elephant has just fucked my cat. And I try and say, what? He said, your elephant has just fucked my cat. The elephant trying to say, what do you mean? Like that? He said, no, shit of brains. Like that. Geezer down in court. Judge said, this is the most horrendous case I've ever tried in my entire career. You, sir, on the 4th of the 5th, 1992, are charged with caving your daughter's head in with a hammer. And a voice at the back of the court went, you lousy bastard. The judge said, keep that man quiet. Keep him quiet. How dare you, sir? You're also charged on the same date with caving your daughter's head in with a hammer. And the same voice at the back of the court went, you stinking lousy bastard. The judge said, bring that man here. How dare you? Attempt to come here. How, how, dare, how dare you? This is the most horrendous case I've ever tried in my entire career, and you're calling him a lousy bastard. Why are you calling him a lousy bastard? He said, I'll tell you why I'm calling him a lousy bastard, Judge. I've lived next door to that man for 25 years, and every time I asked to borrow his hammer, he fucking said he never had one. <laughs> Here, yeah, this thing. This will kill you, this will. He's went bear hunting. He's got three rifles, a 2 2 rifle, a 3 0 3 rifle, and an elephant gun. And he sees this bear in a clear. And like all good sportsmen, I mean, a good fisherman will go after a big fish with a very, very small line. He thought, I wonder if I can take this bear out with his 2 2 rifle. If I want it straight in the air, it's bound to kill it. Bang! Over went the bear. Geezer's walking the clearing, no bear. Tap on the shoulder. He looked round, 15 and a half foot of grizzly looking at him. <laughs> this bear went, You're a dickhead, aren't you? <laughs> He said, two, two rifle, 15 and a half foot of grizzly. He said, you've got two choices. Either I'll crush you to death, or you drop your strides, bend over, and I'll give you one. <laughs> Geezer went, fucking turn it in, will ya? He said, do you want it or what? He said, I ain't got no choice. Ge bend over, while up the bear went. Geezer was crawling back to his car. He thought, yeah, bear, I dare. If I get my 303 rifle, hit him straight in the bleeding brain, blow his brains up, bang! Over went the bear, walks in the clearing, no bear! Tap on the shoulder. <laughs> bear went, I think you're a sandwich short of a picnic, he said. <laughs> You've got two choices. Either I'll rip you to pieces, or I'll whistle out, and all my bear friends come down there, we all give you one. <laughs> oh, he said, fuck it now. I've got no choice, have I? Forty bears, did they give him a service or what? <laughs> Geezer's crawling back to his car and his rage come up in his side. I thought, I'm going to get my elephant gun, don't matter where I hit my blow up pieces. Bang! Over went the bear, walked in the clearing, no bear. Tap on the shoulder. Bear went, I don't think you're here for the fucking hunting, he said. <laughs> Like I always say, I must be very obvious you ladies and gentlemen listen to me talk till I come a working class family. I was born in the East End of London, British sector. <laughs> <laughs> Raised up around there by my own nan and granddad. Three brothers and two sisters, also sleep in the same bed. 
I didn't was a lot of sleep on my own until I got married. And <laughs> my old granddad was the laziest old bastard I've ever met in my life. A prostitute said to him one day, do you want a blowjob? He said, well, I think we don't, money. <laughs> I mean it. I mean it. Oh, he was a funny old man. I loved him dearly. He, was so, he had a wonderful sense of it. I remember sitting in a bath with him one day, and I was only a toddler. And I said, here, granddad, I said, how come, how come all your head on your, on, on your head is, is, is all grey up there and all the air around there is all dark? He said, I've got no fucking worries down here, boy. <laughs> yeah. His mate said to him one day, here, Charlie, there's a rumour going around, you've got a 12-inch cock. He said, I oh, know, I fucking started it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's funny, he's funny. He's lovely. Uh, it took up a bit of believing boxing, you know, to get hold of a few. Bob, in the first fight he had, he fought a bus driver, and he was in the you know, first round, waiting for a punch to come over, and none come over, and all of a sudden, three come at once. <laughs> <laughs> He's laying on the floor, and the ref said, stay down all nine. He said, what's the fucking time now? He said, <laughs> when he got up, he said, you better go to a neutral corner. My granddad went to fucking Switzerland. <laughs> oh, I loved it, old oh boy, I did. In actual fact, anything about knows anything about my, my family, when I know what I'm about to tell you, you know, it's perfectly true. My granddad was heavyweight champion wrestler of this country for nearly nine years, and he took it off a fellow called the Terrible Turk. And as you all know, these speciality holds are all these uh, wrestlers, they've all got them every season. And this Terrible Turk speciality hold was called his Turkish Delight. And no one had ever got out of the Turkish Delight, no one. And my granddad was getting in the ring, his manager went, don't get in the Turkish Delight. My granddad said, leave me alone, I won't. 30 seconds later, my granddad was in the Turkish Delight. His manager said, you pillock. He turned around, he walked to the top of the hole. When he got to the top of the hole, he had this tremendous roar. He looked around the terrible Terrible Turk was spark out. My granddad was a weight champion. His manager rushed down, got him out of the ring and said, Sam, marvellous, bloody marvellous. You're a weight champion. But no one's ever got out of the Turkish delight. How did you manage it? My granddad said, well, I had him in an half Nelson. I was just about to put him in a folding knee press when he gave a little flick and I couldn't move. I was like, let's see. About the corner of my eyes, I saw this large pair of plums looking at me. <laughs> so I went, ah. <laughs> Amazing the strength you get when you bite your own balls, isn't it? <laughs> And you know, <laughs> you know, as you go through, through life, things happen to you, things are said to you that you are very prolific and they stay with you all your life. I mean, I'll never forget my, my old dad talking to my granddad many, many years ago. My old granddad was a very old man. And he said, Look, dad, he said, uh, yeah, me and mum are a little bit busy these days. We can't look after your property. What we want to do is send you an old people's home. Oh, he said, Daddy, don't do that to me, boy. He said, No, daddy, he said, Look, I've had a look at the place. He said, It's a lovely place. I want you to go down there for seven days. If you don't like it for seven days, you can come back home and I'll give you my word. We'll never mention it again. Well, the old boy's gone to this old people's home. He's lying in bed the first night. When the door opens the following morning, in walks his pretty little nurse. She went, Morning, Mr. Reed. He said, Hello, sweetheart. How are you? <laughs> she looked down the bed. She went, Have you got a stirring in your loins? <laughs> Yeah, you think we well, <laughs> So we'll soon get rid of that with your sweetheart. She threw the blankets back and started off with a five knuckle shuffle. <laughs> which quickly developed into one round the wall of death. <laughs> <laughs> when it was all over, my granddad was straight back on the phone to my dad. He said, here, boy, it's bloody marvellous. And he said, absolutely bloody. Oh, he said, Dad, I'm glad you like it. Wonderful. The old boy put the phone down. He's walking down the hallway in his Zimmer frame. He's tripped over his Zimmer frame. His nightshirt's come over his head. Who should be walking past but a male nurse? Fucking have some of that. He went, what? <laughs> the old boy went, get up, you bastard. When it was all over, he straight back on the phone to my dad. He said, here, boy, get me out of here. He said, what's the matter? He said, what's the matter? He said, I'm walking down the bloody hallway in his Zimmer frame just now. I've tripped over his Zimmer frame. The nightshirt's come over my head. And this bloody male nurse has given me one. He said, hang on a minute, Dad. Five minutes ago, you were saying how great it was in here about a nurse giving you a blowjob and all that. He said, yeah, but I worked out the pros and cons. He said, I get old on once every six months. He said, I fucking fall over seven times a day. <laughs> he was cracking. Yeah, cracking old man. Lovely geezer. Anybody got a cigarette by any chance? I know you can't smoke out there, but I mean, do you mind me, old mate? Bit of a liberty, but I left mine in a machine, see? <laughs> any chance of a lawyer? I'm not fucking Paul Daniels. <laughs> As long as we're home by Friday. Mine ears up my trunk. Good luck, Trump. Losing your barnet like me, cockerel. Eh? That's all them U-turns on the sheets, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Woof! 
after walked in a bar, I walked up to the fellow behind the counter, he said, uh, Pink Jim, please. <laughs> Barma said, Piss off. I said, What do you mean, piss off? He said. <laughs> he said, Piss off, you're a wolf. He said, So bloody what? He said, Look, Just clear off, mate, will you? Same guy's all in the same bar. Next night, he said, Pink Jim, please. <laughs> Barma said, Do you want a fucking dry slap or what? <laughs> Smack with you. He said, you're a woofter. He said, so what? He said, no, so what? You're right, me old son. He said, we can't know where we made. I understand it. He said, but you got to look at it from my side. He said, if I serve you tonight, tomorrow night you'll be in with a bleeding pal, right? But in three months' time, I'll have a woofter pub on me, and I don't want it. Now, piss off. <laughs> this woofter went down to a fancy dress store. I'd have a bleeding great guardsman's unit on. He's walked in that night, bing, Jim, please. <laughs> the barman went, piss off. He said, what do you mean, piss off? He said, you're a woofter. He said, hey, woofter. <laughs> hey, bleeding woofter. Guards, <laughs> Busby, 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 boots, tunic, handbag, fucking handbag. <laughs> Geezer said to his mate, oh, he said, what's the matter? He said, what's the matter? He said, look, you look upset. He said, upset. Upset, he said. Dave's dead. He said, Dave's what? He said, Dave's dead. He said, what happened? He said, what happened? He said, he's coming home the other night. He said, he's pulled outside the house, put his foot on the brakes, the brakes ain't working. He's come across the lawn, through the bleeding gate, he's hit the concrete steps, the car stood up an end, he's gone through the steel roof of the car, up to the bedroom window, straight through the bleeding bedroom window, all the glass has come down and shattered him in the back. Oh, he said, I'm, oh, I'm choked with that. He said, no, 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 he, 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 got, he got away with it. He said, <laughs> what he did then, he said, he, he's trying to get himself up. He said, he, Grabbed out of the wardrobe to open himself up. He said, as he's grabbed out, the wardrobe's coming towards him. He's put his left hand out to steady himself. He's grabbed the light bulb. He's never had a big chandelier fitting. It's all come down. It's cut his face to smithereens. And the wardrobe has smashed him into the bedroom floor. Oh, he said, what? Terrible. He said, no, no, no. No, no. He got away with it. He got away with it. <laughs> what he did, he kicked the wardrobe off him. He's crawled out to the hallway, lifted up, and got the loft ladders down. And he got up to the loft, trampled the wire out that he pulled through the ceiling. As he's gone up, his foot's gone through the floorboard. He's reached out again for the header tank. As you know, that header tank up there is a thousand gallons. It's come over on him. The wall has crashed all over him. The bleeding header tank has smashed him through the ceiling onto the landing below. And all the wall has gone. And it's caved all his ribs in. Oh, he said, what a way to die. He said, no, no. No, we got away with that. He got away with that. <laughs> he said, he's pushed the header tank off him. He's staggered about, he's hit the banisters, he's gone right over the top of the banisters, but he's brought the banisters down, the banisters are twisted in midair, and as he's hit the ground, the banisters have come down and pinned him to the floor. Four banisters right through his chest, there's blood all over the place. Oh my God, he said, what a way to die. He said, no, no, he got away with that, he got away with that. <laughs> he's pulled the banisters out of himself. He's staggered in the kitchen where all the water is. He's slopping about through the water. His big toes caught the carpet. He's ripped the carpet. He's fell forward. He's put his head through the wall where the light switches is. All the electric cables have gone round his bloody head. 300,000 degrees, then volts all filled with the water. <laughs> oh, he said, what a way to die, man. He said, no, 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 he got away with it. He said, fucking hang on a minute. Hang on. He said, how did he die? He said, I shot him. <laughs> he said, why did you shoot him? He said, he was wrecking the fucking place. <laughs> Two four-year-old boys in class once said his mate, Dave, over there behind that radiator, that is a contraceptive. His mate said, what's a fucking radiator? <laughs> The other kid said, Miss, what does masturbation mean? Oh, masturbation, that's a mouthful. He said, no, that's a fucking blowjob. <laughs> and I remember, I'm sure you do, listen. When things happen to you in school and class, I remember something going back years ago. We were supposed to make up a story with a moral and all that. Game, and I don't know what the other kid said, but I know I said that. I, just, I said, Miss, my, my story is with a moral. That my granddad was in the First World War, which he was. And, I said, and he was out with a platoon of men, and, and they all got killed. And my granddad was on his own in a shallow. And all he had was a bottle of whiskey and uh, 12 bullets for his gun and, and a bayonet. And when all his mates got killed, he drank the bottle of whiskey and he thought, him for a penny, him for a pound. And he, 
he jumped over, jumped over the shallow, he said, and he shot 12 Germans, and he, he killed another 48 with his bayonet. He said, oh, that's a gory story, Michael. What's the moral to that, son? I said, don't fuck about with my granddad when he's pissed. <laughs> And you know, please listen to me. <laughs> and you know, for those amongst you who haven't got kids there, a family is yet. It's such a joy, and I say that with great sincerity. A family is such a joy and such a boon. They bring lots of tears. God, do they bring heartaches, but the joy they can bring you. And when I look back over my life, and all you parents know what I'm talking about, I remember my Michael, when he was about two years old, we got rid of the potty, we let him use the big pan for the first time, and he weren't quite tall enough, and that old, poor little old cocker, there he was on tiptoes, he was just dangling over the pan, you know, all of a sudden, down come the seat, wallop! <laughs> kiss it, kiss it! <laughs> she said, don't you fucking start your father's larks, you know. <laughs> And I say this with great sincerity, all you ladies sitting out there, and I've always said this and I mean it very sincerely, housewife is the hardest job in the world, no matter what the old man does, the mum's always on call, 24 hours a day, it never stops, but the old man's always the gunfighter, isn't he? You go a day's work, I remember Michael, he's about eight years old, I come home after an hour, a day's work, and I walked in the door, she went, hey, am I? I, wanted to, I said, what's the matter? She went, uh, it's, it's Michael, I said, what's the matter? I said, I, um, I got caught him today, you know, you know <coughs> playing, playing, playing. <laughs> Playing with himself. I said, well, you know, well, all right, well, you know, you know, tell him. Said, no, no, you tell him. I don't want to fucking tell him. You tell him. I don't want to tell him. No. So go on, you're the father, you go. Oh, balls. <laughs> what do you want? I said, it's me, son. Oh, it's your coming, Dad. Ah. Right. I said, Dad, listen, uh, Mum's, you know, Mum's told me about, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know. <laughs> You know, but you, 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 you play playing with yourself. Don't, 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 don't do that, son. You don't do that. Yeah, it can you know, affect your eyesight. So. <laughs> he said, I'm over here, Dad. Because <laughs> I said to his boy one day, I'll tell him I'm going to do something. I'll take you down to South End for the day. But not like we do nowadays in the car, like we did in the old days in the chuff chuff. He said, you mean it, Dad? He said, I do, son. They got on the chuff chuff, they got down to South End, they're walking on the beach, and the boy said, here, Dad, can I have an ice cream, Dad? Can I, Dad? Can I, Dad? Can I, Dad? Can I have an ice cream, Dad? Can I, Dad? He went and gone, yes. <laughs> you can have an ice cream, little man, but don't go running away with yourself because you just got off the chuff chuff. He said, there's the ice cream. Cool. He said, thanks, Dad. He's all up his hoot and running down his shirt. Fifteen minutes later, there's another sign there. Rocks. Cool. He said, can I have a rock, Dad? Can I, Dad? Can I, Dad? Can I, Dad? He said, hang on, boy, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yes, you can have a rock, little man, but don't go over the top. You just got off the chuff chuff. You've had a nice cream. Now you want a rock. You don't want a rock. That is, there's the rock, darling. It's all crumbling down his strides. His lips and hands are all stuck together. <laughs> Half hour later, another sign there. Donkey rides. Oh, he said, can I have a donkey ride? They can, they can, they can. He said, hang on, boy, hang on. He said, hang on, now listen, listen, listen. You've had a ride down on the chuff chuff. You've had an ice cream. You've had a stick of rock. Now you want a donkey ride. He said, I want a donkey ride, don't He said, get on the donkey. Get on the fucking thing. <laughs> He's just coming up with another sign there. These donkeys are for sale. Oh, he said, buy me the donkey, buy me the donkey, buy me. He said, what are you talking about? Buy you the donkey. I'm going to ride down the chapter, ice cream, stick a rock, donkey, and they want to buy the donkey. He said, buy me the donkey, then. He said, I'll buy you the bloody thing. They've got the donkey on the box cart on the train going home. He said, we're going to call it, son. He said, then I'm going to call it wanker. He said, wanker? You've had a ride down the chapter, ice cream, stick a rock, donkey, ride, book to the donkey. Now you want to call it wanker? He said, I want to call it wanker, then. He said, call it what you're bleeding like. They got it back to the house. He said, where are you going to keep it, son? He said, Dad, I'm going to keep it in my bedroom. He said, with a fucking edge up, you are. What are you talking about? You've had a ride down the chapter, ice cream, stick a rock, donkey, ride, book to the donkey. You've called it wanker, there's no way you're going to keep it in the bedroom. He said, where are you going to keep it, Dad? He said, don't worry, son, I'll build you a shed. The old man went out, built this great big shed, put the donkey in it. That night there was a thunderstorm, and the lightning went fur, lash, and the thunder went cur, runch. The donkey went bezwork, wallop, over's gone the shed, and it across the field. Now, the boy has seen this. He ran into his dad's bedroom. He said, Dad, Dad, wank us off. He said, now fucking turn it in, son. <laughs> you want to ride down the chuck chuck? <laughs> Ice cream is getting rock. <laughs> I've got a pal of mine who suffers desperately, and that is the only word I can find desperately with farmers. Farmer Giles. 
Hemorrhoids for Christ's sake, hemorrhoids. <laughs> and he heard one of these old wives' tales, if you bung plenty of tea bags round it, it'll clear up. So. <laughs> there he was with the Tetley tea bags. <laughs> dee, dee, diddly, diddly. <laughs> Five days later, he couldn't stand any longer. Oh, he said, Doc. Oh, he said, Doc, I've got piles. He said, have you then as a fiver? He said, no. <laughs> no, no. Doc said, we'll drop my trousers, bend over, let's have a look. My mate went, <laughs> the doctor went, oh, uh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> my mate went, can you see anything, Doc? Well, we have that. You're going on a long journey. <laughs> Turn it in! I'm going home last night on the side of the road to go, thumb in the lift. I thought, Michael, my son, that would do you. I've got to go on the back of the motor, neck and a crook of my arms, legs over my lap. I'm blowing down the rear, doing me Martin Harvey. I said, babe. I said, you've, uh, you got the summer in your hair. You've got the winter in your eyes. I said, you got the autumn in your lips. She said, if you don't get some spring in your ass, we'll be here all fucking night. <laughs> Irish fellow walked in the bar, he said, a glass of orange, please. The barman said, still orange? He said, yes, I haven't changed my fucking mind. He's won 15 grand in the pools, 14. So, well, how much I can do with it? I mean, I've got a nice motor car, I can't buy an house with it, but I want to do something I've always wanted to do. I want to go to Japan for an holiday. That's what he did. He went out to Japan for an holiday. Been there about four days. He thought, I fancy one of these Japanese birds. Goes down this pretty little painted house, knocks on the door, darn little bird come to the door with the knitting needles in her ear. She went, What do you want? He said, What do I want? What do I want? I want bunches of that. That's what I want. <laughs> Oh, she said, we have many, many things. He said, what's the best thing you've got? Oh, it's the best thing we have. Very, very expensive. He said, I ain't worried about the price. What's the best thing you've got? The best thing we have is called a wax treatment. He said, that's what I'll have, darling. She went, you sit down there. He sat down, she rang a bell. Out walked two darling little birds. He said, this man, I thought, a wax a treatment. They got him by the end, took him in a room. They're all due respects to European girls and you ladies sitting out there. Japanese girls, Far Eastern girls, they look after a man. They've been bought up from their eyes to look after a man. Off come the suit, shirt, tight, all out nice and neatly. Socks inside the shoes, under the shower with two large loafers. We, we, well, about two minutes of this, he starts to get a lazy lob. <laughs> They've dried him off, tucked him out, took him out of his room, and you know them Japanese girls have got those long fingernails? They start to rake his body gently, but very, very gently, all down his neck, behind his ears, across his chest, round the aris, the plums had a share as well, right? <laughs> Well, he looked down and he was so proud, he'd never seen it like that before. It was going, arr, 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 arr. She went, are you ready for a wax treatment? He said, yes, I'm ready for the wax treatment, darling. With that, then two little girls disappeared. In walked an 18-year-old beautiful. Not thang on at all, not a bleeding stitch of clove on. Naked as the day when she was born. And a long black hair with a little nipple sticking for it. She had a tongue like a roll of lion -o. Why is she been, have some of that. Arr, 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 arr. She went, are you ready for a wax treatment? He said, of course I'm ready for a fucking wax treatment. With that, she took him by the end, took him to another room. In the middle of this room was a hand-carved mahogany table with a big marble top. She went, you put a wink on table. He went, and it was lying again. With that, she disappeared. In walked a 32-stone sumo wrestler. He walked up to his geezer's dick and went, nah, hey! And a fucking whack shot out of his ears. Ping! Listen, 
He rushed straight downstairs, got hold of her behind the counter. He said, nothing's occurred. He said, nothing's all i got is a bruised wing. She went, we have many other things. He said, well, she got. She said, we have penguin treatment. He said, that's what I love, the penguin treatment, the penguin treatment. So when you sit down, as you sat down, rang the bell, a little bell came out. She went, this man, I thought, penguin treatment. She got him by the hand, took him in the room. She went, you drop trousers and the pants around ankles. <laughs> Why she went, started to choke his chicken. <laughs> Oh, he says, yes, I like the penguin treatment. Oh, he said, yes, yes, yes. Oh, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, thank you, God. Oh, he said, yes, I love the penguin treatment. Here we go, here we go, here we go. With that, she got up and walked away. He went, where are you fucking going? <laughs> He rushed straight downstairs, got a handful of money out of his drawer, went and got the first bird he could see. We struck to a bedroom, peeled off both of them. Her legs were caught last night and his ass was a blur. She went, knack a high, knack a high, thought you randy little cow. She went, knack a high, knack a high, she said, you like this, didn't you? She went, knack a high, knack a high, she said, you think this is great, didn't you? She went, knack a high, knack a high. When it was all over, the geezer went back to the hotel. Four days later, he packed his bags, flew back to England. A week after that, he's playing golf with a vicar around a golf course who'd also been to Japan. And the vicar said to him, oh, did you pick up any your language while he was in Japan? Oh, Said a few words, Vicar. Yeah, a few words here and there, you know. I come to a par three, the Vicar took a four out of his bag, 234 yards, hit the ball, struck on the open of the green, he walked up the green, took his putt out of his bag, a 45 yard, I will repeat that, a 45 yard putt. He putt across the open of the green, right through the nap, straight in the hole. This geezer went, Vicar, that's the finest putt I've ever seen in my entire life. Knacker high, knacker high. Vicar said, whatever you mean, wrong hole. <laughs> Phone rings in a woman's house. She picks the phone and a voice at the other end of the line said, Mr. Davis, she went, yes. Mr. Davis, it's the mortuary here. Oh, uh, oh my God, what's, what's the matter there? Mr. Davis, we, I'm sorry, we have a very severe problem here. Not only is your husband's penis rather large, but rigor mortis is set in and we can't get the coffin lid down. Oh, well, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> What are you going to do? What are you going to do? And Mr. Davis, the only answer we have is to sever your husband's penis at the base and place it in his own rectum. She's gone down to the mortuary the following day. There's her old man lying in his own coffin with his own wink up his own bum. <laughs> and he's got a little tear in the corner of his eye. <laughs> and she leaned over and said, Fucking hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> I've got a bit of news for you, for those amongst you who watch soaps. You know, you know, I work on a one called EastEnders. For those amongst you who don't know. I'm coming off of that now, I've had enough of that. It's all right, son, I was like that after my first pint. <laughs> no. I'm now going on the Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> and I can't wait to say to some grey-haired old woman, do you know what that's worth, darling? Fuck all. <laughs> Thanks for coming, good night, God bless. I hope you enjoy. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you.